And we begin in Lebanon, where Mustafa Adib has just been named as Prime Minister-designate and tasked with forming a new government. The ambassador to Germany won support from several parties, including the Future Movement and the Shia bloc Hezbollah. There is no room for words or promises. It's time for us to join hands and restore hope among Lebanese. All Lebanese are pinning high hopes on this and we hope we will be successful. We want to restore hope and get back on our feet to work for the benefit of our country. I have accepted this task because I'm aware and all the political factions are aware of the gravity of the situation and the necessity to immediately implement reforms. OK, let's bring in Zena Khodr, who's live for us in Beirut. Uh, Zena, why was it that Mustafa Adib managed to garner so much support? Well, there are two reasons. Yesterday, he emerged as a consensus candidate. The different political factions from across Lebanon's divided political landscape, uh, they agreed that this is the man who is going to head uh, the next government. But what we understand is that there was a lot of pressure from behind the scenes. France, a main power broker in this um, ongoing political crisis in Lebanon, uh, trying and persuading Lebanese politicians to move ahead, to form a government that is ready uh, to carry out much-needed reforms to unlock aid and to reach a bailout plan with the International Monetary Fund. We heard Mustafa Adib say the right things. He's promising a swift formation of a government. He's promising to carry out reforms. He's even saying that his cabinet is going to be made up of experts. We heard that from the previous Prime Minister, Hassan Dieb, when he took office a few months ago. But this time around, uh, yes, both these men, Hassan Dieb, Mustafa Adib, they have been appointed by the political establishment, an establishment which has governing this country for decades, an establishment many people do not have faith in. But unlike Hassan Dieb, he has the support of the majority of the parliamentarians, and unlike Hassan Dieb, he seems to have the support of the international community, which could make it easier for him to push ahead with much-needed reforms. And Zena, of course, it doesn't matter essentially who gets into the prime minister's slot. The problems that Lebanon is facing remain the same, and it's an uphill battle from here. A lot of challenges. This country was close to collapse before the August 4 Beirut port explosion, which destroyed and damaged many neighborhoods in the Lebanese capital. Billions of dollars are needed to rebuild the homes and people's lives. Before that, the economy has been run to the ground. The currency, the exchange rate has plummeted. The price of food rising. Unemployment is rising. According to the United Nations, 55 percent of the population of 5 million people live below the poverty line line. Those in power, the political establishment, are being blamed for years of corruption and mismanagement. And that's why the international community is telling them there will be no blank checks. You have to agree on reforms. You have to fight corruption or else you're not getting the money. So at the end, it seems that those in power realize that this is their last chance and they may at least cooperate more than they were uh, intending to do in the first place. Zena, thanks very much. That's Zena Khoda live for us in Beirut.